Welcome to Harper. It's lovely to see you as we gather together this evening to worship God and to praise His great name. As we begin, let me read to you a few verses uh, from uh, Romans chapter 10. There Paul writes, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let's pray. Precious Father, we thank you that as we come to you, we come to a God who delights in saving sinners. We come to a God who has done everything necessary that broken sinners like us might be saved and brought into the family of God. We praise you for your love. We marvel at your grace. We're in awe at all that you've done for us. And as we gather together this evening, help us to uh, meditate on these things. As we worship you and praise you, help us to catch a clearer glimpse of who you are and what you've done. Uh, and we pray, Father, that we would forget about ourselves and be taken up in praise and worship of you, the one true God. We pray, Father, that you would come and speak to us in every aspect of this gathering, particularly in the preaching of your word. Come and reveal yourself to us, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, let's stand together and sing two songs. Uh, first of all, we'll sing All Creatures of Our God and King, and then At Your Name. Let's praise God.
your seats. Uh, as you know, we are continuing in our evening series, Bodybuilding, Proverbs, and tonight we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 10, and Anna's going to come and read that passage for us. Proverbs 10, 1 to 32. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is a sorrow to his mother. Treasures gained by wickedness do not profit, but righteousness delivers from death. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but he thwarts the craving of the wicked. A slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but the might the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. The memory of the righteous is a blessing, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise of heart will receive commandments, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. Whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but he who makes his ways crooked will be found out. Whoever winks the eye causes trouble, and a babbling fool will come to ruin. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offences. On the lips of him who is understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him who lacks sense. The wise lay up knowledge, but the mouth of a fool brings ruin near. A rich man's wealth is his strong city, the poverty of the poor is their ruin. The wage of the righteous leads to life, the gain of the wicked to sin. Whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life but he who rejects reproof leads others astray. The one who conceals hatred has lying lips, and whoever utters slander is a fool. When words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver, the heart of the wicked is of little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of sense. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Doing wrong is like a joke to a fool, but wisdom is pleasure to a man of understanding. What the wicked dreads will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous will be granted. When the tempest passes, the wicked is no more, but the righteous is established forever. Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to those who send him. The fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked will be short. The hope of the righteous brings joy but the expectation of the wicked will perish. The way of the Lord is a stronghold to the blameless, but destruction to evildoers. The righteous will never be removed, but the wicked will not dwell in the land. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked what is perverse. Amen. Well, let's come before the Lord in prayer and spend some time in prayer before him. Precious Father, as we bow in your glorious presence this evening, we take comfort in the knowledge that you are a sovereign God. You're the one who works his will in all of providence. We rejoice that you are the one who sees all and who knows all. And you're the one who has infinite power, unlimited power, all power. And so as we bow before you in all of the different need of our lives, we do so secure in the knowledge that you are able and that you care. Father, we lift our world before you with all of its trouble and difficulty. We think of those who grieve there in Russia following that terrorist attack that's taken place in past days, the the, the wickedness of what men and women will do seems to know no bounds. And Father, we uh, pray for those who who are grieving We pray for those who are injured. 
We pray for those whose lives have been torn apart in the matter of moments. And we pray that in the midst of all of that pain, all of that sadness, that hearts and minds would be drawn to you, that people would turn to you, that those who know you would cling to you with all their might, and those who don't would find you in the midst of that catastrophe, in the midst of that awfulness. And we see such awfulness in different ways, shapes and forms dotted around the planet, the things that take place there in Ukraine, the things that are going on in Gaza and Israel, such horrors. And yet, Father, we know that you are not impotent in the face of these things. Rather, you are sovereign in every way. We look forward to a day when there will be peace, a day when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, a day when all tears will have been wiped away, when there is no more death, and that glorious new world will be centered around you, and you will be with your people. Father, we pray that the trials of this world might turn us heavenward, the trials of this world might bend our hearts and our minds towards you. We pray for uh, gospel partners in other countries. We think of Dragisha in Serbia and Jovica. We pray you would bless them as they seek to minister the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ in, in Serbia. We pray for Sami there in Lahore in Pakistan, asking again for blessing upon his ministry and the, the ministry of the church there. Protect them from evildoers and keep them uh, faithful in proclaiming the glorious gospel to those around them. And we pray for Carlos in Tigre. We pray that you would bless him uh, as he continues to serve there at Grace Village. And we pray that you would help him as he continues to pray and plan for the establishment of an effective vibrant gospel church there. We pray that you would bring that to pass. We pray you'd do that all over the planet, Lord, that you'd raise up gospel witness in all of the different places of the world, particularly in the dark places of the world, that the glorious light of Christ might be seen. And Father, we pray for uh, those in our church family who are struggling in different ways, some from loneliness and isolation and the lack of being able to be here anymore when that's their heart's desire. We pray, Father, that you would surround them with grace and mercy and that you would give them hope in their hearts even in this difficult season of life. We pray for those who uh, are still experiencing the, the pain and sadness of, of grief. We pray that you would heal broken hearts and give hope even in the midst of that very particular pain. Uh, we pray, Lord, for those who are nearing the end of life and those who are in the vibrant, energetic youth of life. We pray that whatever stage in life we're in, we would focus our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ and live faithful lives before the one who saved us, the one who died, that we might have life. Give us hope in the midst of all of the challenges and cause us to rejoice that we are your children. There is none like you precious Father, and the cost that you were prepared to pay that we might be saved is beyond anything we can understand, and yet that's what you've done for us. So, Lord, help us to rejoice in that and to remember that moment by moment. We pray that you would bless our brother Will as he comes in a short time to uh, bring your word to us and open up this passage to us. We pray that you would bless him abundantly, give him freedom in the Holy Spirit, give him the power of the Holy Spirit and use him uh, for your glory and our good. We pray all of this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, let's stand together and sing once again two songs. Jesus, keep me near the cross and you alone can rescue. After this, Will is going to come and bring us God's word.
Si desea escuchar nuestro sermón en español, visite nuestro sitio web a continuación. اگر مایلید خطه را به زبان فارسی گوش دهید، لطفاً به وبسایت زیر بروید. Well, good evening. So we're back in Proverbs again. Um, uh, hopefully, we're going to be able to focus on a few bits of text to help us. I may have some slides. I do. Thank you very much. Whoever put them up there for me. Uh, okay. I can see the wee thing, but I'm not sure. Now, throughout our lives, we're surrounded by speech, and that speech can have quite a big effect on us. For example, as a child, your parents would have spoken to you, and those words can be words of encouragement, or they can be words of discouragement. As Christians, we're meant to bring our children up in the Lord, but we're also not to exasperate them. Now, once you're then a bit older, you might be at school or university, or at work, and you can be surrounded by colleagues or peers who again might say things which are more or less helpful. Uh, you may well have heard the, uh, the common rhyme, sticks and stones don't break my bones, uh, sorry, will, will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But the point of this sermon is that words are exceptionally important, and they do have a lasting effect on us. Now, This evening, we're looking at several proverbs that focus on the tongue. And in particular, it's not about tasting things. It's about speech and how we speak. And often in the Bible, it is when we're talking about the tongue, about speech. Now, to set the scene, I'm just taking us back briefly to uh, the first part of Proverbs. So this is Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1 to 7, just to give you the flavor of Proverbs as a book. It says this in verse 1 of uh, chapter 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands gain sorry, obtain guidance and understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. If if you have the time, and I would encourage you to take the time, it's a good thing to read through the whole book of the Proverbs. You can read one or two Proverbs, and that's what we're going to do this evening. We're going to look at particular ones. But if you read it all, you have this message uh, about the wise and the foolish. Uh, To be wise here is to to be more like God, to know God better. Uh, As we can see, uh, the last verse I read, verse 7, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now, the point here is that if we have a right understanding of who God is, his holiness, his majesty, his power, then we will fear him. Not fear as in we will be scared in terms of going to him, but we will know who he is and we will treat him accordingly. And so having a fear of the Lord is actually a healthy thing. Uh, It causes us to treat him properly. Uh, The other character you can see is mentioned at the end of this little bit of text. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So throughout Proverbs we have the wise who are able to listen perhaps to rebukes, but they're able to listen to the, to the instruction, and the fools who don't want to know. They're the <laughs> ones with the fingers in the ears doing foolish things. Okay. Now, as we look at our um, text this evening, I've got for us five titles. Don't worry, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on each one, so it won't be that long. Um, The first one we're going to look at is silver and wisdom. And again, this is talking about speech. Hopefully. Yeah, great. Um, Silver and wisdom. And for this, we're looking into chapter 10 of Proverbs, which Anna read to us earlier. Uh, Verse 19 and 20, and then we're going to have a look at verse 31. These are particularly about speech. So in verse 19, it says this. 
When words are many, transgression is not lacking, but whoever restrains his lips is prudent. Now, some people find that they need to say a lot, and often it's because they want to draw attention to me, 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 look at me, I'm over here. Uh, you see that sometimes with uh, politicians or people who want to be popular with others. Uh, you just say a lot of things, drawing attention to yourself. You might make things more extreme than they should be in order so you're the focus of the conversation. Now, fast responses, as we're instructed by this verse, can cause us to quickly sin against others and against God. You can imagine if your focus is purely on yourself because you're not secure in the Lord, and you're babbling away words to focus the intention on yourself, you're not thinking about glorifying the Lord, you may say things which are unhelpful uh, towards others. Now, this is a challenge for all of us. We can get carried away sometimes. We can babble on uh, and say things which, oh, oops, I've said that now, which we then realise afterwards we shouldn't have said. Now, looking a little bit further into uh, this uh, chapter 10, we've got verse 20 that says this, The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is of little worth. Now, bear in mind that these proverbs have been written down mostly, not all, as you'll see towards the end of the book, by Solomon. And if you remember your Bible history, God asked Solomon what would he like and Solomon said he wanted wisdom to govern God's people. And so God gave him wisdom. So what we've got here in Proverbs is God-given wisdom. So although this may well be Solomon who had uh, spoken this or written this down um, for, uh, for us to read, it's actually God's approving. It says, The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. So God approves of the speech of the people who are putting their trust in him. Now, don't be confused. Whenever we talk about righteousness in the Bible, it is righteousness that's been credited to somebody. So that person has put their faith in Jesus Christ and they're trusting God. And so, by their life, living out their life, they are faithfully following God. And you can see that faith in their works, that is, their tongue is somehow bridled, what they're saying is said carefully, because they fear the Lord, and so the Lord is working through them. So you can see that person may demonstrate restraint, and they may well please the Lord, and the Lord, how does he think about it? Choice silver. It's high quality silver. But notice, as often in the Proverbs, we have a contrast between the way of the wise, or the righteous, or the godly, and the way of the wicked, or the foolish. In this case, it says, the heart of the wicked is of little worth. Now, there's a connection in the Bible between what is inside you and what you say. So often, if it's bad inside, what comes out is bad. Um, so here we can see the heart of the wicked is of little worth. So God sees that in a wicked person, that is a person who has basically rejected him, they've not been made righteous by faith, there is little worth in them. There's not much good there. They might have an echo of the creative force in terms of they know a little bit about uh, morality because God made them, but ultimately there's not much there. It's a bit like the chaff on the wind blown away. Okay, Let's go a little bit further down the chapter to verse 31, where it says this, The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off. Again, we can see the contrast. The person who is trusting in the Lord, the Lord has credited them with righteousness, what are they doing? They fear God, because God has given them the fear of God and his grace. What do they do? They bring forth wisdom. What sort of thing in terms of the book are we talking about here? Well, here you can think about it as the knowledge of God. 
Uh, they might be discussing the gospel or maybe a particularly important point they've been reading in the scriptures or maybe they've been discussing or thinking about uh, a lesson that God has instructed them in maybe through a particular bit of suffering where they've had to trust him. So you can see this person who's bringing forth wisdom is more than definitely sharing bits of scripture or bits of how God is working in their lives, not to their glory, but to the glory of the Lord. Their focus is on him. But notice, the perverse tongue will be cut off. So this is somebody who... Um, has not accepted God as their Lord, so they're not following Jesus Christ, they're not living by faith, and what do you see? It's going to be cut off. There is no salvation, and judgment awaits for the one who's not credited with righteousness. That sinful tongue will be silenced. So you may find upon the earth, you may find people who say a lot. Maybe they say a lot of bad things, but their time is short and it will be ended, and then they will see judgment. Now, the challenge for us from this uh, couple of bits of Proverbs I've read to us is to say, think about what we're going to say. So don't say it first, think, then say. If it isn't helpful, if it isn't going to build other people up, if it isn't wise in terms of godly wisdom, you know, people uh, should be brought towards the Lord, encouraged to follow Jesus. If it isn't useful, maybe we shouldn't say it. We can hold it. We can pray about it. We can share it with the Lord. Um, and God, God really, really values the careful spoken word of his people. It is choice silver, as he says in the text. Great. So I'm going to go on to the second one. Now, in our second one, we've got healing and eternity. And for this, we're going to flip forward a couple of chapters to chapter 12. So we're looking at verse 18 and 19 in chapter 12. You can see it on the screen behind me if you get lost. So it says this in verse 18. There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. <coughs> Now this time we've got it the other way around. It's the person who is not following the Lord, who is not living by faith, who, what do they do? They speak rashly, quickly, uh, with haste, and it's like sword thrusts. Now, if you take a sword uh, and, and it's thrust in your back, it's probably going to kill you. Uh, so these actions, these rash words, are going to either leave somebody uh, badly bleeding or mortally wounded. Now, what is it talking about here? It's not actually going to kill them, but it may well damage their self-confidence in the Lord. It may well affect their faith. It may well bring them low or leave them hopeless. So the, the death here that could occur is the death inside, the lack of purpose or, you know, you take the person down a couple of pegs would be the way we talk about it. Here, these sword thrusts can level a person, bring them down until they are effectively lifeless. Now, look, in contrast to that, what have we got? The wise person, they bring healing. If there is a discomfort, maybe there has been an argument, maybe somebody's been taken down a couple of pegs, that wise person is able to come in and say a few words to encourage, to build up. Have a look further forward to verse 19. It says, Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue is for but a moment. Again, we have the contrast. The one who is seeking the Lord, their truthful lips endure forever. Their um, work done for the Lord lasts forever. They have hope in the eternal God. But the lying tongue is but for a moment. It passes away. It doesn't last. They're like the chaff in the wind, and their words will be gone. Before they realize it, it's too late. Now, we can damage others with our words intentionally or unintentionally. We can be careless. Uh, if you remember the World War II propaganda, it used to say, in Britain anyway, careless talk costs lives. And that is a challenge to us in the church. Are we the problem? 
Uh, as elders, we're often potentially the biggest problem, but are we the problem that's preventing somebody hearing the gospel? Are we getting in the way? Are our rash words causing somebody to lose hope or certainty in the Lord? Now, the Lord can override our weakness. Don't get me wrong. He can override our weakness and still secure somebody for himself. But it is a good thing to look at ourselves and bridle our tongues and think about what we are doing. So I'm going to go on. Life and knowledge. So this, we're flipping forward again a couple of chapters. So we're on chapter 15 now. Uh, and we're going to look at two verses in chapter 15. Now the first one of these is chapter 15, verse 2. It says, The tongue of the wise commends knowledge, but the mouth of fools pour out folly. Again, here knowledge is the knowledge of God. It is to know God, to have a close personal relationship with him, whereas what comes out of the fool's folly. It's uh, useless. Now, you probably have seen follies occasionally. They are actually buildings that uh, people used to build to employ uh, workers. Uh, they didn't have any purpose. They were just to, to, uh, to allow poorer people to be paid, but they're ultimately useless. Uh, hence, folly uh, is um, what we have here, rather like a folly building. There is nothing good that's coming out of this person. They babble away, probably to draw attention to themselves, and they are actively rejecting God's wisdom. And they promote, what do they promote? Nonsense and sinful behavior. And this is the sort of thing we can see today. We can see people promoting things which might look sort of okay, but if you look inside the box, they are ultimately useless. Uh, they are nonsense, and they may well look, make the person look good, but they're ultimately not helpful. So verse 4, we've got, A gentle tongue is a tree of life, but a perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Now, tree of life, you're thinking the garden. You know, tree of life. Uh, a gentle tongue. Now, this tongue is one who speaks gently or kindly, values others, the, the, that person is similar to the Lord. They are able to see God's work. They are trusting the Lord and they can see the Lord working through them. And so, what does their tongue do? It is the mechanism God uses to cause life. You uh, or me or whoever in the church might be used by God to be the vessel through which the gospel is shared to be the person who carries that message. We're not the saviour, but the, the gospel goes through us, and in doing so, can be life to somebody else. Whereas the perverseness, what does it do? It breaks the spirit. It uh, is essentially crooked or perverse. This word uh, here could be either one. And that person is acting as a servant of Satan. They are undermining the truth and causing someone potentially to lose hope. Let's move on to number four. So four we've got here, misery and restraint. And we're going on a couple more chapters to verse, se sorry, to chapter 17, um, 20 and 28 we're going to look at. So it says here in 20, a man of crooked heart does not discover good and one with a dishonest tongue falls into calamity. Now here we've got a person who has not been restored by the Lord. It is a person who is godless, who is not trusting in the Lord. Their heart has not been changed. There is no Holy Spirit working in them. And what does it look like? A man of crooked heart, or a woman of crooked heart, um, does not discover good. Now again, the word good here, meaning of God, of uh, Jesus himself would say, you call me good teacher, but no one is good except God. This discover good, discover the purposes of God. So if somebody has a, a twisted, broken heart that God hasn't changed them, they can't find him. In this we can see the message of God's grace, that it is God's grace that changes people so they can find him, so that they can see what is good in the eyes of the Lord. And that person who's fallen, who's not been saved, 
their dishonest tongue falls into calamity, into disaster, into misery. Uh, it is sure that they will end up being judged by the Lord one day. If you look a little bit further onto verse 28, you can see even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. So this, the encouragement here is, if you've got nothing good to say, don't say anything. It's, it can well be the right thing to do, uh, just not to say it. Uh, and here, this person who is otherwise a fool will look wise, because other people will say, oh, he's not talking. That's a good idea. Um, Nevertheless, you could also turn it around and say, well, in this person there's no work of the Lord and so the person doesn't actually have anything useful to say so he may as well not say anything. Now, without God's work in our lives, we end up like this person here who doesn't have anything useful to say but praise God by the Holy Spirit, by God's grace and Jesus Christ, we can be different and we can seek after God struggling in our mortal flesh. Okay, so I'm going to go on to our last one, which is persuasion and anger. And for this, we're flipping all the way forward to 25. So this is chapter 25, and we're looking at verse 15 and 23. So it says this in 25, 15, it says, With patience a ruler may be persuaded, and a soft tongue will break a bone. Now this word... Uh, soft here is basically soft or tender or delicate or potentially weak. It's actually translated in some verses of scripture depending on the context as weak. So this is somebody of little power who is speaking wisely and if you know your scripture well it's a bit like uh, the story of the persistent widow with the corrupt judge. That she had little power but she insisted that the corrupt judge would take action and eventually, yeah, he did it. So what we're being encouraged here is that we should speak truthfully to our rulers and even if we are weak and we're speaking in God's wisdom, that, that can actually persuade them to change their direction. It doesn't change their heart. If they're lost, they are still lost, but it may cause them to act differently. And a soft tongue will break a bone. Uh, potentially um, it'd cause damage or at least change a direction. There's great power in words, uh, as we said at the beginning of this sermon. Don't think that words aren't powerful because they are. So we're going to go down to verse 23 of 25. So it says this in verse 23, The north wind brings forth rain, and a backbiting tongue angry looks. Now, if you are living in the land of Israel, uh, you'll know that the rain in the monsoon season in particular comes mostly from the north or northwest. Uh, it's colder air over Turkey and the eastern Mediterranean Sea. That's a weather pattern that they have, and it, they know when it goes around to that direction at a particular time of year, you're going to end up having rain. So that's a certain weather pattern. And so in contrast to that certain thing that they knew, uh, we have this, and a backbiting tongue, angry looks. Now the backbiting tongue here, uh, again the word that's being translated into backbiting, is also um, associated with secret, secretive action. So this tongue is saying bad things, but it's a tricky, nasty plan. It might be, um, for example, somebody has taken somebody aside and they've said something bad about someone else. Uh, and then that thing is discovered. And it, once it's discovered, there is an angry look. So what are we being challenged here? We're being challenged that if we say things, if we gossip about people, if we say bad things about people, it will be found out. Now, of course, it's the Lord who sends the rain. The certainty of rain at the northwest uh, or north wind direction is from the Lord. And the Lord will find out what we've said all along. And if we fear the Lord, we won't be saying bad things about people in secret. We will be trying to encourage people. Even in secret, we might be praying for them, that they will be improved or encouraged or challenged 
or blessed by God. Now, in conclusion with this uh, sermon this evening, our words reveal our true character. The words that we speak are connected to what is inside us. And as we see in Proverbs as a whole, um, as well as from the bits that I've read to us this evening, those who speak foolish, foolishly are of little value to God. And what we also saw is they will be judged and they will no longer be able to speak. They will be cut off or silenced. Their time is short. They don't last. Now, similar to Satan, whether they like it or not, they are serving Satan. And what are they going to do? They're going to slow lies, slander, cause other people maybe to give up hope, say, ah, you're not good enough. That's the sort of thing that they'll be doing. They're, you can only be serving one person at once. You can either serve the Lord God Almighty by his grace, or you can end up serving Satan because you've chucked away the idea of listening to the Lord. And so these people, yes, they'll serve Satan, yes, they'll sow lies, but it will come to an end. Their end is sure. And if it looks like they've got lots of power, don't worry about it, it will come to an end. Now, in contrast, if we are trusting in Jesus for our justification, what happens? If we really understand it, we don't need to say a lot. We don't need to babble on about ourselves because that ultimately doesn't matter. We know that it is only by God's grace, Jesus crucified on the cross, that we have salvation. We know that we only have hope because Jesus was raised, so we will be raised. And so if somebody insults us or you know, says bad things about us, we'll go, okay, yeah, that wasn't very nice. But I know that I'm saved in Jesus Christ. I don't need to argue with this person. I mean, if they ask me a question, I might say, well, no, that's not actually correct but I don't need to justify myself. I don't need to babble on about things. And it also changes our focus, as you've seen throughout this text. It changes us to be people who glorify God rather than ourselves in general. And so out of a heart who seeks to follow the Lord Jesus Christ will come words of wisdom, words of godly wisdom, teachings, sayings, uh, maybe ways that the Lord has blessed and encouraged, not to glorify the person who's speaking, but to glorify the Lord. And it's by his grace that he can change us and enable us to be more like him. Now, we need to continue to follow him. Uh, he, even the Apostle Paul talks about his struggle with himself, that he wished to follow the Holy Spirit, but then sin comes in and trips him up. And so sometimes we may end up speaking rashly. We may end up hurting and harming somebody when we had no intention of doing so. We may have said a foolish joke and then that person's really upset. Or it could be all sorts of things where we've missed the mark. And if we do that, what can we do? We can have the humility to go and apologize, to know that it is much better that we apologize, that somebody understands that we fear the Lord and through that apology, that person might think, goodness me, the Lord is at work. That person can see the wrong of their words. That person has humbled themselves before me. Because why? Because they have realized that they have mercy in Jesus Christ. That there is some working of the Holy Spirit. And that there is... Uh, potentially the preaching of the gospel, even by the way we live our lives. So how do I want to leave this sermon? Let's leave this sermon focusing on serving Jesus Christ with how we speak. And that is how we should be. What comes out of us, remember, that is what we say, and what's inside will colour what we say. So may we live to the glory of of Jesus Christ, now and forever. And may we focus on him as we try to encourage, challenge, maybe evangelize, build up. May we focus on him and his glory. In his name, amen. Now we're going to sing our closing uh, hymn, which is Your Will 
be done by God and Father. Let us pray. Father, we pray that your will will be done and not our own. Father, we pray that you would teach us to be your people. Help us, Lord, to listen to your servant. Father, listen to your scriptures. Listen to your preaching. Help us, Lord, to listen to your Holy Spirit. And ultimately, help us, Father, to follow Jesus Christ. Please, Father, may you mould us and shape us in your image. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us say the grace to each other. Um, great. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
Please, if you can, uh, stay for some tea and coffee. Thank you.